Hi, this video will cover section 7.1, linear and nonlinear systems of equations. So for this section, um, our objectives are to use the method of substitution to solve systems of equations, um, of linear equations and two variables. Also to use the substitution methods and method, method but now to solve nonlinear equations. So that's a very nice um, thing about it. And then we will be using the graphical approach to solve some systems and um, and then create some, um, I mean, use systems to solve some real life problems. So let's get started. And I'm going to recommend that you watch the video that is in the same folder as chapter seven under the subfolder um, extra help videos so that you can have a better, um, a more detailed introduction to to the topic. Uh, so systems are something that you cover since, I don't know, Algebra 2, Algebra 1 maybe. Um, so just in case you need a little refresher on that. So method of substitution is uh, an example of a system of two equations and two, and two unknowns. So here we have equation number one, equation number two. And I do like to number them. And so our unknown variables will be, of course, y. That's one of them. So we need to find a value of y that will make both uh, equations true and also uh, a value for x. So we need to find both an x and a y that will make both of the equations of the system true. So those numbers, uh, since we have two numbers, x, y, is going to be, um, they're going to be uh, an order pair. So we we're going to have the x and then the y value. And that is because we have two unknowns, two variables. We say that we're working in R2. So the set of real numbers, but a two by two, um, imagine like an Cartesian plane and XY plane. It has two dimensions. So the point or points are called the solution of the system. And like I said, it's an order pair and it satisfies each equation in the system, meaning that if you were to substitute the numerical values found into the equation, you will get uh, true statements for both. They will check. Uh, they will be equal on the left and the right side. So finding the set of all solutions is called solving the system of linear equations. Um, so we have here, for instance, the order pair 2 comma 1 is a solution of the system. To check this, substitute 2 for x and 1 for y in each equation. So let's do that. I'm going to copy the equation for equation number one is 2x plus y equals 5. And so we're going to substitute x with a 2 and y with a 1. And we're going to see if it is true that it is equal to 5. So this is more like a question, not a, a statement. So let's see. 2 times 2 plus 1 is equal to 5. Is this true? So we have 4 plus 1. And you could see that you have 5 on both sides. So that means it is true. Now let's go ahead and substitute it in the second equation. And so I'm going to copy that. So 3x minus 2y equals 4. 3x minus 2y equals 4. So again, we're going to substitute x with the number given to us right here. And then we're going to substitute y with the given number for um, y. So we have 3. We have 3 times 2 minus 2 times 1 
and now our question is if this is equal to 4. So we have 6 minus 2, and you could see that we will get a true statement, 4 is equal to 4. So it does check for both, and that's the condition that you need to have uh, a true statement on both equations uh, for that particular point to be considered the solution. So we could say that, yes, the point two comma one is a solution to the system. of linear equations. Which system? The one that we started with here. All right, so that is just checking if something is a solution of the other. Now we're actually going to solve a system. And so we are going to begin with the method of substitution. And so the steps are listed here, so I'm going to highlight some things. First step would be to solve one of the equations for one variable in terms of the other. Second step will be to substitute the expression found. So this expression found is going to be very important. That's the one that we find in from step one. And so we're going to substitute that, but it must be into the other equation. Not the same because we will just go around in a circle. It needs to be into the other equation. Um, then for number three, we have solve the equation from uh, obtained from step two. So from the previous step. And then once we have a numerical solution, was what that's what the word solve means to find a number, or in this case, an ordered pair, two numbers. Once we have that, those numbers for x and y, we are going to substitute them. So we call that back substitution, those two numbers. Um, and they came there from step three, the previous step, into the expression obtained in step one, into that expression found. And with that, we will find the value of the other variable once we do that back substitution. And then finally, you check that you that the solution satisfies each of the equations. Um, you could also check by graphing them. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. So especially if you're taking an exam, make sure you do check your solution. Okay, so right here we have a system of equations and we are going to solve it by substitution so what we're going to do and i'm going to do that here on the first slide so first thing i'm going to i'm going to number them so this is one and this is two and so first step that we have here it says solve for one of one of the equations for one variable. So if I take the first equation, x plus y equals 4, and let's say I want to solve for, for x, it will be x is equal to 4 minus y. Now that is the expression found that step 2 is talking about. That's the expression found. What are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to substitute it into the other equation. So we're going to take equation number two. So I cannot erase that. So step two. We're going to take the second equation, which is x minus y equals 2. And I am going to substitute the expression found right here instead of the x. Why? Because that's what I'm saying, that x equals 2 from step 1. 
So we substitute that and we will get 4 minus y instead of the x um, right here instead of this x. That's the expression found. And then we still need to write the minus y and that is equal to 2. So now I'm going to solve the equation. So this will be step number 3. Step 1, step 2, step 3. And this will be 4 minus y minus y is equal to 2. I'm going to combine like terms. So it's 4 minus 2y is equal to 2. And from here, I can leave the 4 there, take this positive 2 across, so it will be a minus 2, and take this negative 2y to the other side, so it will be positive 2y. So 4 minus 2 is a 2, 2 is equal to 2y, and then we will get that y is equal to 2 over 2, so therefore y is equal to 1. So now we have solved for one of the equations. And now what we need to do is to back substitute. So this will be step number four. Back substitute. And it doesn't really matter which equation you choose to back substitute. Um, you know, so I'm just going to take equation 2 just for fun. So x minus y equals 2. So since I found that y numerically, the value is equal to 1, I'm going to substitute there. So x minus 1 equals 2. And then I'm going to just solve for x. So 2 plus 1. So x is equal to 3. And so now... I have the value for both for x and for y. So my solution as an order pair, it is, uh, oops, wrong color. That's for x. So x is equal to 3 over right here. And then y is equal to 1. Now I left the space here because I do want to point out that there is another way to solve systems, which is called the addition or elimination and some students prefer to use that there's nothing wrong with that and this is a very good example of how it will be so much easier to use that method instead of sub of substitution so what we do is we add one equation to the other uh, and so if we add x plus x we get 2x if we add plus y plus negative y or y minus y, it's, it's zero. So we say they cancel and then four plus two is six. So then x will be equal to six divided by two, which is equal to three. So we get the same solution that we got here. And how can we obtain y? Well, we could just substitute a three in one of the equations. So for example, if we take that equation and we say x plus y equals 4, 3 plus y is equal to 4, so then y is equal to 4 minus 3, so y is equal to 1. So we got the same solution, um, two different methods. So let's move on to the next um, example. And we have here that we're going to have two solutions, and if you notice here, we have a quadratic equation, and then we have a linear equation. Um, so, what we're going to do is uh, solve the same thing. First, I'm going to take, it will be a lot easier if we take this equation, and because the coefficient of y is a negative one it will be a lot easier to just solve for that so that's gonna be my first step to solve for y and uh, equation number two so I'm gonna copy it first 2x minus y is equal to negative one so then 2x plus 1 is equal to positive y 
if I just rearrange my terms from subtraction to addition or from negative to positive. So now that will be the expression found that we're going to substitute into the other equation. So my second step will be to substitute the expression, right, 2x plus y plus 1 for y into the other equation. So that will be into equation number 1. So I'm going to write down the equation that we're going to use. So that will be the quadratic. That's equation 1. So 3x squared plus 4x minus y is equal to 7. And what we're going to do now is that for every x that we see here, we are going to substitute the expression found. Actually, no, I said that wrong. Sorry. So we have to substitute y with the expression found. So right here. So now we're going to have 3x squared plus 4x minus, and I'm going to write the expression found in parentheses so that I don't forget to distribute the negative sign. So to the 2x and to the positive 1. So then we have 3x squared plus 4x minus 2x minus 1 minus is equal to 7. And since we have a quadratic, we want it to equal to 0 on one side. So we're going to move that uh, term, the constant term, the positive 7, we're going to move it to the left. So it will be subtracting. And we do that uh, so that we can um, solve the quadratic. So we could combine like terms here with the x terms. So now we have 3x squared uh, plus 2x and then minus 8 is equal to 0. And I am, I'm not sure if we can factor it. So let's, let me see here. Let's just go ahead and use... Um, the formula so we have that the quadratic formula so a is 3 b is 2 and c is negative 8 so if we take the formula x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b square minus 4 ac divided everything divided by 2a so we will get negative 2 plus minus the square root of b squared, so 2 squared, minus 4, and I'm going to need a little more room, 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 8, so we divide by 2 times 3, which is a, and um, this will turn into negative 2 plus minus the square root of 4, ignore the page number, 4 plus 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 8 is 96, everything divided by 6. So I'm going to shift this a little bit. So, so then we have x is equal to negative 2 plus minus the square root of 100 divided by 6. So this means that we could have... Um, that we will have actually two solutions so one will be negative 2 plus the square root of 100 which could be 10 divided by 6 and the other one will be x equals negative 2 minus the square root of 100 which we know is 10 so you could see one with the plus one with the minus and then also divided by 6 
So here, first we do what's on the numerator. So negative 2 plus 10 is 8. 8 divided by 6. And here we could divide both top and bottom by 2. So we get 4 thirds. For the other side, we get x is equal to negative 12 over 6. And this will be equal to negative 2. So now we have two different values for x. And since we know that the solutions are order pairs, meaning an x and a y value, uh, the point of a, the coordinates of a point. So we do need a y that will go with each x. And for that, we need to go back to um, the, we could take the expression found, in fact. Um, I guess that's like step four. And we substitute. Subs substitute x values into y equals 2x plus 1 to find y. And remember, we're going to do it twice. So here we have the 2x values. So and we have the expression that we're going to use. So let's see, for x equals 4 thirds, here's the x value that we're going to be substituting. Remember, it came from the ex expression found when we solve for y uh, in equation 2. So then this will be y is equal to 2 times 4 thirds plus 1. And here we will get, if we multiply straight across, like we should do with fractions, we will get 8 thirds plus 1. We know that 1 in terms of thirds is equal to 3 thirds. So we have 8 thirds plus 3 thirds, and that equals to 11 thirds. So what that means is that the order pair will be 4 thirds, comma, 11 thirds and for the other x value for x equals negative 2 now we're going to substitute that into the same equation right here instead of the x to find y so y is going to be 2 times negative 2 plus 1 so y is equal to negative 4 plus 1 so y is equal to negative 3. And so our second solution is going to be the point negative 2 comma negative 3. So I graphed the two equations on decimals to show you how the solution will be represented graphically. So you can see the equation in red. It's the quadratic one, and it is uh, opening upward. And then the equation in blue is a linear one. And you could see the line here. What I really like about decimals is that you don't have to solve for y to graph an equation or a function. You could just type it like it is. Uh, because if you use the calculator, um, I believe all of them, you have to enter your function in, in, um, as a y, e y equals. So with decimals, you don't have to do that. And so if I look at the intersections, and we could see right there negative 2 comma negative 3. I hope that's one of our solutions. Where are they? OK, so yes, we did have that one negative 2 comma negative 3 it's right here and then we also have the 4 thirds 11 thirds so that's one and here is the other and you can see that will be for the x value 4 thirds that's approximately 1.333 and then for what was that? 11 thirds, that it will be approximately 
six six seven if we round it so there you have it that is um those are the two solutions so you know when you're doing your homework if you just if you keep getting something wrong perhaps you're missing one of the solutions so graphing it is always helpful um of course you need to know the uh, exact values i don't think web assign will take the decimals unless they specify that they want you to round so going back to our powerpoint so now let's go to the next slide and so we have that um the graphical approach to finding solutions for instance the two equations in figure 7.1 graph has two as two lines with a single point of intersection uh, the two equations in figure 7.2 graph as a parabola and a line uh, with two points of intersection so right here figure 7.1 we have two lines and they have a single point of intersection that will be right here and you could see the solution is 2 comma 0 meaning that if x is 2 the y is 0 and that is also I mean only one solution okay and for um, 7.2 we do have two intersection points similar to the example we just did that I show you and that's because the line and the quadratic they could intersect at <clears throat> two points they could also intersect at uh, no points or they could even intersect at only one point all of those are valid um, cases I guess or outcomes and so for example if you look at uh, well that was for 7.2 parabola and aligned with two points if you look at the next figure which is 7.3 you could see that the graph has no points of intersection so the line is just uh, going from here to here. The parabola is opening downward, so it's not going to touch the line. Um, so in this case, it's okay to not have any intersections. And so what we say is that it has no solution because there is no point for which both uh, lines touch each other or both graphs. And of course, you can have one solution or you can have more than one solution. In this case, we have two solutions, but there are some where you have an infinitely many amount of solutions. And for those are the ones that are overlapping. Okay, so next example, we have a, a logarithmic equation and we have a linear. I have the graph there, but just pretend that you don't see it. So if I want to graph, uh, and it says here, solve it graphically, right? So I'm just going to graph them like if the solution wasn't there. So for my, let's start with the easiest. Actually, I mean, if I want to graph this one here for natural log of x, I know that it does have an x intercept here at 1 comma 0. And then it does go like that. It increases, not as fast as an exponential. And then it gets closer and closer to the y axis, but it doesn't touch it because, in fact, that is a, um, an asymptote. and more specifically a vertical asymptote so it's not going to touch it and then um, for my linear equation if I solve for y it's going to be y is equal to negative x plus 1 so here I'm saying that the y intercept is going to be the point 0 comma 1 so it will be here and then 
uh, based on the slope, the slope is equal to negative 1 over 1. So we could say that we will move one unit down, one to the right. So from that point in blue, it will be one down, one to the right. One down, one to the right. And so it actually just conveniently happens to be there. We can keep going. So one down, one to the right. So our next point will be here. Um, then we can trace the line. And you could see that the point where they intersect is at their x-intercept. X-intercept, and so the solution uh, will be one comma zero. So, um, for this type of equations uh, or questions, I wouldn't have a problem with you using technology to find the solution. Uh, but just so you know, sometimes you might get an answer in decimals and WebAssign might want an exact answer so it's still good to know how to solve them if it wasn't graphically um, the way you will solve them if you had to solve them by hand it will be by doing something like what I'm going to show you so actually since we have y is equal to natural log of x and the other one is x plus y equals 1. So if I solve for y on the second equation, it will be negative x plus 1. And what I will do now is take the expression that represents y from the right side um, and then with the other one because we know that y is equal to y. So if we're going to solve the system, we're going to equal the two expressions to each other. Um, <clears throat> so this will be the natural log of x is equal to negative x plus 1. And so from there... Okay. I think I'm actually stuck. Uh, I don't know. What could we do? If we exponentiate that, I mean, I feel like we're just going to go back in circles like that. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Okay, so I thought about it, and <clears throat> one thing we could do, uh, I I will never put a question like this on your test, so based on the property of exponents, when you add exponents, is because things are multiplying. So we could factor e to the power negative x plus 1 as e to the power negative x times e to the power 1. Now, since we have a negative exponent, we can bring that to that quantity to the bottom to take care of the exponent, make it positive. So now we have e to the first divided by e to the x. Then e to the x is dividing on the right side. So if we take that across, it's going to be multiplying to the x. And now we almost have this one to one property here, except that we have that x right here however since this is a one and if, if we try to substitute here x to a, with a one um it would actually work so i mean that's the only way i can see um i'm sure there's another way so then this will tell me that x is equal to one why because if i substitute it here and here i will have x to the first times one so it's actually true that it equals e to the 1. So the solution is 1. And if you substitute that into x, for example here, ln of 1 is equal to 0. So that will give you the solution as an ordered pair uh, 1, comma 0, as we got from the from graphing.
Okay, so we're going to do an application now, and this is a very common one in business, uh, and it is called the break-even point. And so for that, we're going to need two equations. One of them is going to be representing the total cost of producing X units of a product. So when we talk about cost, uh, well, we'll use C of X. And we're going to have two things. One is the cost per unit. And just like the name says, per unit, so we have to count how many units. We're going to use X as our independent variable. And then we're going to add the, uh, I'm just going to delete this, the initial cost. So the initial cost is something that even though you produce zero units, you still need to pay for that initial cost. So if you start, um, I don't know, a business, before you could start um, um, calculating how much it will cost you to, to I don't know, like a, a, if you have a restaurant, uh, before you could start calculating how much it will cost you to buy groceries to sell your food, first you need to calculate what are the initial costs. Um, so that includes, let's say, your electricity bill, your water bill, um, perhaps your insurance, or things like that. And then the cost per unit is how much it will cost you to build each unit. If you have a restaurant, imagine, um, I don't know, if you sell burgers, uh, how much it will cost you to build one burger to, to be uh, sold. So uh, besides cost, we're going to be using another equation, and we're going to call that revenue. So the revenue um, is the money that you get from people and uh, that you get to charge people. Now, you don't necessarily get to keep it because you still have to pay for the cost. Um, so for that, there's a thing called profit. So in fact, the profit is equal to the revenue minus the cost. So, the break-even point, it means that your profit of X is, your profit is equal to zero. Um, that's why people say that, like, I barely broke even. So, that will happen whenever the difference between the revenue and the cost are equal to zero. Or... In other words, if we take this statement here and we say uh, R of X minus C of X is equal to zero, that's the break even point. So if we just take the cost equation to the right side, it will be positive. So that is another way to, to say that. So either when the revenue equals the cost that's when you will break even or when the profit is equal to zero so we're gonna be answering a question about that but first we're gonna construct our equation well it's already there so we, let's see a shoe company invest three hundred thousand dollars in equipment to produce a new line of athletic footwear. So that thir uh, 300,000 is going to be here. Then um, for the initial cost, then each pair of shoes cost $5. So the cost per unit is going to be $5. And to denote the number of units, we use the variable X. And initial cost is right here, plus 300,000. So the cost function is here. And then it says that it costs $5 to produce, and they sell for $60. So right there, that will give us our second equation which is the revenue equation and so for that 
we have the price per unit they sell for 60 and then how many times x so that will be our second equation and now the question is to find the break-even point and so we take both equations that one and I'm just gonna write the other one here so we don't forget 5x plus 300,000 so to break even we need to find when they are equal to each other and so we're simply gonna write the expression for one of them 60x equals the other expression 5x plus 300,000 so we want to say the cost is equal to the revenue and that's what it means to break even so 5x plus 300,000 is equal to 60x and so we are going to take the positive 5x to the left so now it's negative here we still have our 300,000 and then 60x minus 5x is 55x here we have 300,000 and so x is going to be equal to 300,000 divided by 55 And that will be equal to 5,454.5. So since X represents the number of units, uh, we might have to just round this one unit up. So it will be 5,450 five so to the nearest whole number and then um that will be at how many units that will break even and if we want to know what the cost or the revenue were at that point we could find i think r of x will be easier r of five thousand four hundred and fifty five units and so just like the equation says is 60 times the number of units and so I'm going to multiply that so 60 times 5455 and that will give me 327 thousand three hundred dollars so that was the cost of building those many and that was also how much they earn from building those many um the reason that they, they just broke even, even though they sold so many, is because we have um, the initial cost. It was pretty high. It was 300000 for the equipment. And so that's why. Okay, so this is the last problem. Thank you for watching the video.